Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Welcome to Dumb SEO Questions, episode 449. Uh, each week uh, we meet here to review the uh, uh, questions and answers given on the Dumb SEO Questions Facebook group. With us tonight we have, um, uh, after a short break, um, Andy Wigglesworth. Um, Andy was uh, in, in our uh, first uh, uh, hangout um, and, uh, and he disappeared for a couple of weeks. Um, okay, Tim Kappa. Uh, oh, sorry, a Andy is a, um, a, a leading graphic designer in the Midlands. Um, yeah, um, Tim Kappa is... Um, CEO of onlineownership.com. He's a, a, a Google uh, product expert um, in the Google My Business community. Uh, Tim is based in Corby, about 100 miles north of London. Not as high up as Andy, uh, Tim. About the same height. No, I'm further north. Uh -huh. No, he's, he's another hour and a half north. Mm -hmm. Okay, and Mr. Taki Wasser is webmaster of whatsaweb.net. Uh, he's also a Google product expert on the AdSense uh, community. Mr. Taki is based in Wimbledon, um, a suburb of London. Right, Al, let's have a look at the um, questions we've got tonight. Um, uh, let me see. I sort of clicked the right. There it is. Okay, so our first question, uh, it's from Lena Barbin, and uh, he said, that I would like to remove pages from my menu. Um, brackets, removing, not deleting. I don't know what the significance is. I'm sure someone here will tell me. Um, these pages are linked from uh, other pages, but I'm afraid that their rank will be affected by this manipulation. I have 11 pages in my menu. I'd like to take out some of them. Do you have any advice? Thanks. Um, uh, I, can't, I don't understand a sentence. Uh, their rank will be affected. Depending on what CMS you're using, you can essentially adjust your menu as you want it you can even put it into secondary uh menus so for example um let's say in your menu you actually had a link for special offers and within special offers you had five or six offerings within the special offers category you, you could you can you can actually table them out into sub sub layers and things like that um you know, it might just be worth, look, the ideal thing is, in theory, is for a user to be able to find a page within sort of three layers, right, that you're looking for. If you have, I don't know, quite, a, yeah, you could say you've got 11 pages in my menu. Would it be possible to rearrange those? Just see what's in the menu and see if they would fit into two or three defined categories and then actually split them into so that you've actually got three category sections in your top nav and then they can each drop down and provide you know five in each or whatever you know four or um it's all about looking about it but no having a lot of pages is not a problem it's how you define them and display them um and if, in all honesty, you had 11 in your drop-down menu, it's not an issue. I mean, if you look at some shopping sites, you can drop down, and they can have, like, um, we was I looking at the other day? I uh, can't remember. Was it Marx's? You, you know, you can have, like, 50 in a drop-down menu. It all depends on how you display it. Um, and having them all in one single drop-down menu is not going to affect your rank. Um, it's just think about it more for the user. It doesn't really affect how uh you know they rank in, in that sense thank you tim yeah i, I 
I, I, I didn't understand the. I, I, I'm, I'm glad I had you to enlighten me. Let's put it that way. All right, let's go to number two from Neil Cheeseman. Um, it's um, is the the cached URL the one used by Google for the search engine um, results page? Sometimes, but not always. That's uh, uh, Neil said a dumb question, a dumb SEO question. Um, is there or could there be another version of the URL that is used um, in the uh, um, live index? This is um, a bit, bit weird. Um, I, 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 there's an answer that I gave there, but um, gee, that, that's sort of right back um, when, um, right oh. back when we first started that question. Yeah, well, your, your scrape has gone crazy, Jim. Um, no, I don't think it is that actual cash version, Neil, um, because since Google's gone on the slowdown, um, of indexing stuff, um, I have noticed that you will see a page which is not indexed, which therefore doesn't have a cache on it. Uh, oh, sorry, it doesn't have a cache on it, but it is indexed. And then you can, um, but also this new stupid um, caching th thing they've got menu is ridiculous. And then if you add in the URL, sometimes it provides and sometimes it doesn't. I don't think, no. I don't think it is. I think they have some other form of thing. <laughs> thing. Yeah. Let us know how you found that 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 one. Um, um, I see Michael Michael Stricker, but this was back um, five years ago that. Um, that question was um, done. All right. Um, did, did we answer it, uh, Tim? Uh, I call it a thing and a thing and a maybe. Okay. All right. <laughs> so if that's an answer, I'm not sure. Okay. Let's, let's go to the next one. What's the best place to start is the title. Um, it's uh, from Joshua Walker. He said, I'm a new realtor and I need to get my site a ranking. However, I'm totally lost on all this. Me too. Um, what's the best place to start? Uh, so yeah, I provided a little bit of stuff on there, some old stuff I found on estate agents that I had on my own site, uh, which was to do with structured data and then structuring your own site, just, you know, getting, focusing, remember your, you know, if you are based in an area and that is what, you know, you're going to optimize your site for, um, there's loads of other, there's loads of other things you can be looking at. Obviously, if you're an estate agent, you deal with certain areas. Uh, you probably have your ideal wish list where some of the properties either are selling like hotcakes or maybe they're wealthier areas or some are like, depends on what you specialize in. Um, so I would certainly be looking at location pages in terms of those locations. But go in a little bit more in depth, give your own analysis on it. Uh, you know, what's great, who the builders were in those areas, why they're good, are they built on bedrock, are they built on whatever. Uh, you called it a real estate, so you guys will probably build in wood, which I still don't understand the concept of. Um, but, you know, like when you when you write your location pages, those are obviously, you know, you can you can cover all areas but you obviously have your wish list maybe five top areas create a location page for these like areas i serve give them some really good background info uh you probably have a lot of uh info i mean 
there's loads of even normal websites that give you a lot of stuff on average house prices in the area wi-fi connectivity schools i mean like literally go to town on those location pages um on that you know um at the very obviously at the top it's like hi i'm joshua walker uh, real estate um you know we, we cover this area um you can also then do i'm guessing you have listings on your website or do you just use you you may just list onto third parties but all of those can be nested within one page like oh, that's my location page here are my properties available to sale uh why is xyz location so good um you can literally have a built up massive location page which you can be you know you can really uh rank it for and the top end of all all of that is going to be in xyz main county state whatever citywide area so it all kind of works hand in hand um yeah uh the other thing is obviously your property pages um i don't particularly know how you work it here but the ones i've done is uh almost every single estate agent i've worked with in the uk has you know obviously plugins or whatever the thing did depending on how they work it but they put their they put their property onto their website and that feeds out to every single other the third party property sites um what i found with that is that because it's using different stuff um uh it, it essentially creates it's an essential exact same duplicate the title goes the the body copy everything goes and it's whoever's winning at that particular time for that particular area so whether it's right move right move will sit on top with that listing and then zoopla and then blah 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 and then eventually like page 476 your actual page for the property that you are selling is appearing um so it would be kind of nice just once you've sent it to your third parties then just update a little little bit change it slightly your own body copy so you actually have a slightly different thing on that like i said that's nested into your main location page um when you uh, like yeah what else i mean there's there's loads of there's loads of ways that you can capitalize on location um and what's going on in the areas um in terms of a little bit of link building uh in terms of local you've got citations get 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 yourself listed out there um and another thing that like, i don't know but over here a lot of estate agents sponsor local football teams so you know that's a good way of getting your name out there also if you've got a little bit of um, sort of a marketing budget um well i suppose it's called soccer over there um but yeah you might have little league or whatever or your kids school or you know what i mean um yeah there's there's a lot of stuff you can you can do um but the whole thing with uh, real estate is you focus on the locations one your site as a whole as the overall area and then break it down into location pages good one tim okay i don't think yeah, that's given joshua plenty to go on with um let's um move on to number four on our run list uh, this one from Al Bakito. Um, it's titled Crawl Depth. Uh, he goes on to say, um, so for Crawl Depth, I create separate pages and then internally link them through hub pages and whatever page is relevant, right? Uh. <coughs> kind of <laughs> kind of because this whole crawl depth thing goes back to initially in terms of um the, actually it goes back to the user you know being easier for the user but you can create so many entry points into your content where it sits um these you know um and obviously um 
search engines now are so much more advanced as they were that they can find anything i mean you just take one look at your i don't know your your search console and look at some of the pages that are appearing or some of the search queries and then you think like i've never written something like that and then you drill down and you find like oh holy shit on this page that you wrote like 15 years ago on the blog or something it mentioned uh, pink fluffy elephants and all of a sudden that page is ranking for pink fluffy elephants and uh, you're like yeah, well i i never you know I, I forgot i'd ever published that so in that sense you know search engines find it they find it i mean or if you go on e-commerce you'll find some weird ass parameter query that was indexed before you had even like you know because you had gone live and you had forgotten to canonicalize your parameter queries and you know for a month or so and 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 search engines crawled through and found this thing you know like which have only been live for a month and it, it was already there um so yeah look search engines not so much they'll find anything but in terms of a user and of course your structure it makes a lot more sense to put things uh into places where they're all aligned um whichever you want to call them like hub pages or whatever uh, and they all work together because it just creates a better understanding for a search engine so categories subcategories knowledge content you know knowledge hubs that all work and they all interlink to one particular section or um yeah that makes more sense it makes more sense for a user and it also works better for a search engine's understanding but yeah crawl depth it, like from that perspective is like search engines will find everything excellent tim anybody else all right um looking for number five on our run list it's from jason wells uh, and jason said that why why do uh, being in facebook uh, not like my url um jason goes on to say does anyone fancy taking a look as to why being in facebook don't like my url uh, which is fine in Google, um, but all scans I have uh, ran um, report zero malware. Um, he said, I, I simply cannot find anything that goes against community standards or guidelines. So I'm a bit stumped. Um, and the, the URL is antivirus contact support um, dot com. So when he says doesn't doesn't like, is he saying that Facebook just does not align to to post it and it's never been indexed in bing is that's what he's is that what he's saying i'm not sure but i'm trying to look it up right now well i had a look at the site and it's not the contact place for antivirus software nor is it a place for support. And I think that could be an issue. It sells software, as far as I can see, but it's not the contact location, contact person, contact entity, or well, it, it, this, um, um, this particular URL is on heaps and heaps of um, uh, higher level sites. Um, so uh, I, I think he, he's, yeah, I don't know. But if you look, if you, if you work it into Google, you'll see uh, Trustpilot, um, Kaspersky, et cetera, et cetera. Sorry to interrupt, Le leave me out of it.
Uh, yeah, I mean, potentially like Facebook, I have no idea how the algos work, but um, I'm going to hazard a guess that they potentially feel like uh, it's spammy. From a, you know, like a social media, because you know, I mean, I don't know how their things work, but they did promise to like um, be more careful with the shit they allowed. uh i don't know i mean have you here's the thing for bing why don't you register for bing's um uh search console um and then you can you can make sure that bing finds it or at least bing's search console will tell you why they don't like it I guess we have to move on, but um, yeah, I'm not, not sure what he's trying to do there. Uh, does does he own the domain um, um, antivirus contact support dot com? Yeah, that's the site. I'm assuming that's the site. Um, site search doesn't um, bring up anything on Bing. So that does seem to be the case that it, the domain itself seems to be excluded on Bing. Yeah, and also um, the domain, actually the Trustpilot page is indexed in Bing, which obviously has a link to the site on the indexed page in Bing for their Trustpilot, which in that sense, it's like, well, why the hell yeah yeah bing bing don't like you yeah it may be that it's seen as a sensitive area i think mm -hmm. there are quite a lot of sort of um shady things go, you know, going on with the um, um antivirus you know people <laughs> selling malware as antivirus and all sorts of that so it may be that Bing and Facebook are very um, sensitive about these things, so that legitimate providers are caught in it. Okay. Yeah, I think it's a reseller site, isn't it? Not, I'm not 100% sure how it works but i think the pro I mean, the personal problem that i have is that the contact support bit because it's as far as i can see the site sells antivirus software and and obviously uh, there would be aftercare customer care but it doesn't seem to be geared up towards as the contact place for general queries regarding antivirus software or for support Mm. So, you know, if it's an exact match domain, um, you have to do what it says on the tin. And I'm not sh so sure the contact and support bit really comes into it. If you're saying, you know, I'm selling antivirus software, no problems. But contact support, I think those two words, I mean, how is, how are they? actually reflected on the site. That's where I'm struggling a bit. Mm. Yeah. Uh, well, um, look, um, uh, Jason, um, with, uh, look forward if you if you want want to lodge your question again or add some more detail in um we'll bring it up again next week i'm thinking also um 
typically the biggest scams run online is when you get an antivirus scam pop up and then you've got a contact support which tends to be to the scammer who then uses any desk to get into your computer and you, you know what i mean and then yeah like um yeah and i mean i just searched the three words separate antivirus contact support um even just on google and uh like yeah i mean i just yeah Yeah, and it's all contact support. Like all of the antivirus things are contact us. Like they, they don't, yeah. Mm. And then it's obviously antivirus software support uh, pages. Mm. Yeah, that could be it. You know, they potentially associating your name with a scam. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. All right. Let's roll on down towards um, the finish line. It's number six on our run list from Francisca DB. Um, it's titled, I want to change my website from Elementor to Gutenberg. Um, she says because i think it would make the website much faster uh, especially for uh, mobile but i'm afraid it will be a lot of manual work so i, I plan to do this on the uh, staging server and then import this to production um would this change in any way affect seo rankings negatively um would it be worthwhile to change to gutenberg to um improve speed performance or would it be better to try to optimize speed using element tool uh, any tips thanks the first thing i'd say would be to cache um you get a good caching plugin um and um that would be the, the steps that i would turn turn into anyway what do you guys think yeah, any sort of caching plugin is going to help Elementor. It's, it's notoriously slow. Um, everybody complains about it. So um, it's like any any sort of free page builder sort of templating system. It just adds loads of bloat. Um, so if you've got to live with that, you're going to have to use the tools to help reduce some of that bloat. Um, especially by minifying assets like your CSS and your JS and Try and optimize your images. Um, it's, it's that sort of minimum gains you're going to get from something like that. Otherwise, it's going to be extremely difficult. Yeah, and again, depending on server architecture you might be on, um, you know, you could use a CDN, um, like Cloudflare, maybe to distribute your assets. You know, so there's, there's stuff that you could do for that. But um, I think my point was it's just maybe not looking from an SEO perspective, but from a user perspective, if it's really slow, you're going to upset your users. Um, I'd concentrate more on speeding up for users rather than SEO purposes, but I'll let Tim answer whether it's got more of a SEO thing than the, the user thing. Yeah, from an SEO thing. Like, um, um, hmm. I, I, I equally, I, 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 I don't, I dislike both. I freaking detest Elemental, but maybe that's me because I hate all those little droppy, plucky. I just, it just bugs the shit out of me. Um, but side by side, because I have two very similar sides. 
uh, one is using Elementor, and I guess the other one is just using a similar type theme, but it's not Elementor, it's another one. Uh, um, side by side, they, they, you know, in terms of like, well, you, because with in terms of SEO, you work on stuff, you know, you know, you, 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 you fix things and you optimize them, but side by side, in terms of like how they're both doing with me working on two different things for the same similar sort of time um i'd say you know the search engine doesn't give a toss what it's built in um uh yeah i think in in terms of what a search engine sees as long as you know you don't cock things up exponentially i think it's fine um neither of them are showing any because you obviously you know you use you use uh, different plugins for speed and et cetera, et cetera. Uh, but like I said, I both just like them. But um, side by side, I guess I guess they perform equally as well. And and that's assuming, you know, because you can anyone can cock up a website, you know, in terms of optimizing, and then you wrongly assume that it's the actual. Uh, theme that whatever that you're using as opposed to right, I forgot to leave out the main keyword out of my entire site and or whatever do you see what I mean but yeah but it's like a big uh, it's a big you know depends how far down the line you are if you want to change from one to the other uh, I think you need to just be careful there um, because big changes may not do after like you know after the whole pain of doing all of those it may not provide the results that you assume that they are going to thank you tim all right, so uh, let's go to number seven on our run list. Um, is Inge Andrew Omo Ziku um, asked the question, what do you guys look for when analyzing a website? Um, it could be yours or any other website. One thing I can think of doing um, uh, one thing I can think of is doing an SEO audit, but what else? Um, to be fair, that, that's all that we do. I mean, an SEO audit is um, well. I'm good. Yeah. Look, I mean, the thing is. You, you have to do a, some form of audit um, to to know where to start on, on what you're doing. Now, whether you're doing, and there are a, a whole sort of variations of these. Um, uh, you know, some people, some large, large massively large you know retail sites things like that would would obviously commission a technical seo because it involves so many moving parts in terms of uh products and colors and how that's being served to what and there's like fifty thousand products and so they would commission a technical seo because that goes right behind everything in the entire build the database how everything's working together and populating and etc cetera, etc cetera. Whereas for myself, let's say, for example, um, I have a chiropractor. They treat five different types of things. They may have a little bit of an osteopath that comes in on a few days. They treat other things. Um, and that's completely different. I typically don't have to do in that sense i don't have to do any kind of massive audit um you have uh 
<laughs> you have analytics, you have Search Console attached. Uh, you can visibly see the 20 top line pages and maybe they've got some other content or knowledge hubs that they've created. Um, it's a local business, you can physically see and you can just basically over years of experience, you can have a look at it and just quickly work out where things are missing, where improvements can be made. You can visibly, because it's not a big site, in your head you can quickly look at the structure and say, oh, I need to switch that to there, change that to there, and then, you know, we can align these better. Um, so it all depends on what the site is, um, on on what kind of level of sort of audit that you got to do. Um, and then, of course, you can, there's, a, there's other tools out there which can run quick audits, which can, you know, uh, which can give you some quick insight into where things are cocking up and, and, and things like that um so yeah look it varies it really does vary but that's the first thing whether you're doing some kind of heavy duty technical thing where you go page by page etc cetera, etc cetera, category whatever whatever or to the fact that i've been doing local for quite a long time and i can look at a local business which is 50 60 pages and just in my mind's eye already know how I'm going to tackle the situation and then I typically just write things down structures that I want to uh, in a txt file for myself and then I slowly start implementing these kind of things um, and then obviously monitor changes over the time and then you know you you adjust as you go along so it it, it depends on, on what on what you're looking at every single website is completely different depending on what it is for who it is and what it's trying to achieve. Thank you, Tim. Okay. Let's go to number eight on our run list. This one is from Tim August. Um, does anyone know of best practices for adding videos to a site? Yeah, you know, I wish I knew the answer to this. Um, he said that brackets with respect to search engines recognizing its content and therefore improving SEO. For what it's worth, it's a Shopify site and the videos are hosted on YouTube and in, embedded on their uh, respective pages. They're also subtitled. Christine Shechinga um, said the most important thing you have to have is video schema if you want Google to show them on the first page in the video section. Mm. So, here's, here's the thing. Um, on a gym client, um, I have started aligning up the YouTube with their content and where it's, where it's similar and where it's da, da I've been embedding their YouTube videos. In all of those, I've also put in the video schema right no no great results and bear in mind this 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 site runs exceptionally well um it literally ranks for gyms in london so it it's it's up there the videos have never done really anything they've never appeared really anywhere because that market space is like just full on right every single Tom Dick and Harry does some kind of gym shit on a video um then on the flip side there's a guest training center that I work with who have um it's relatively new uh in terms of that I'm relatively new with them 
Um, the site really only started about two years back, but I've been with them for a couple of months. Um, and they've started just doing some small kind of like boiler tips uh, on YouTube. And uh, obviously I've been, you know, anything creates there, you know, create a piece of content. And this time, as a result from the previous with the with the, the, the gym stuff, I've never seen anything amazing happening with it. I haven't even bothered with video schema. Um, the, you know, the page is titled, uh, you know, you prop, you're properly embedding it, you know, just usual optimization. And of course, there's a transcript on there, no video schema, and, and it's doing well in search results and it's pulling in the actual video within the snippet. So it's actually providing the video and then it's also providing the, uh, the you know, the page organically, uh, you know, below the, the video snippet. So, 100% you've got to add it I don't know I, I don't really know if there's some major best practice for it um, so because I've given you two scenarios one I did it by the stuff you'll find up in all the right tops all over the place it's you know I've done it by the book and it's never done anything for the site um, to the point where I really don't bother with it anymore to the next one where I've gone yeah Let's try it this way. And it's actually working better. So, yeah, you know, go figure. I think it's really also depends on what kind of space you're in. Like I said, with the gym one, every Tom, Dick and Harry does a freaking weightlifting look at me fucking video. And then in the boiler space, there's not, they are there, you know, but there's a handful, you know, there's like 10, 20 training centers. So, in terms of the competition it's not really there but there are people that do it but the simple fact that you're actually you actually have some content on a page you're adding value to the video the videos are adding value to the content works hand in hand and it's doing things nicely you know you're getting this two snippets um so go figure you guys just test it out man yeah i mean i think I think you have to take a sort of total approach to this one in thinking, okay, if people find the video on YouTube, could I get people to visit my site from there as much as trying to get the video ranking as part of the page's content on search engines, if you see what I mean. So, um, you know, in a sense that it's not either or, but trying to guide people from various different um, platforms to your site. So make sure that, you know, that your YouTube description's um, great. You know, people can click through from um, the descriptions and so, and so forth. But I think it would be very difficult for, to rank for the video itself as Google will probably show it on YouTube. Return the YouTube as the result, or as the video result, if that makes sense. Okay, I'm not really on the goal tonight. I must be getting old, am I, Tim? David Roseanne's just joined us. David is a leading internet marketer. He's based in the sunny south of the UK. Um, hot and sweaty today, I suppose, is more apt. Um, and, uh, we won't go there. <laughs> we really won't. <laughs> oh, dear. And what is it like down in West Sussex, uh, David? Um, it's uh, very, very humid and hot. Um, we have low cloud cover and the odd bit of sun, but uh, yeah, it's one of those days. Okay. Well, um, if nobody objects, um, I'll move on to the next one, number nine on our run list. 
from Courtney Gwynn, and she wants to know, she said, I want to know if adding best would make any difference. Um, it's, it, she s said in Google Ads, it always recommends a, a variation of our keywords with best. For example, if I'm targeting the phrase match dehumidifiers for basements, phrase match it uh, will recommend best humidifiers for basements. If I'm already targeting the first phrase match keyword, would it also target the longer tail keyword as well? I want to know if adding best keyword um, would make any difference. Would it be more competitive ad because uh, it's more specific to the search term? Or would it create two competing keywords in the same ad group? I think the I think the situation here is within Google Ads. Um, the thought is the person is going to be searching for best dehumidifiers, best pink elephants, best uh, fish and chip shop near me. Um, whether you can actually claim that your that yours are the best um is another thing um i'm not sure whether google actually um would believe it would they um so certainly you'd have that that problem if um your your customers are anywhere near as cynical as me um if someone uh claims to be the best fish and chip shop in Liverpool um i think well hmm, does that does that actually mean they're the best for me um you know is is a full focus the best family saloon no idea you know again it depends whether it's um whether it's best for me so i'm wondering whether the con the 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 idea the, the yes the idea of putting best in front of um in front of key phrases just because they come up in google ads, ads research or recommendations is a good idea once you start getting into content on your website um personally i wouldn't want to go uh, down the road of um of over claiming uh, my my products or my services, you know, I I'm not going to say David Rosen is the the best SEO in England because uh, someone's going to come up and point their finger at me and go, Bleh. no, no, you're not. I know someone down the road who's much better. Who knows? That's for them to decide um so i wouldn't want to uh to put best in front of many key phrases um uh, in the content of my website i would let it go to um situations like um what you know what are your write-ups what are your your ratings um um to choose to show um whether you're the best Thank you, David. Any more for this one? Okay, let's go to number 10 on our run list. Uh, this one is from Sesha, Sesha Raja. Um, it's titled, Which Component Needs to be Focused on First to Reduce Bounce Rate? Um, and thanks in advance for sharing your thoughts. Um, I wouldn't get worried about bounce rate. Um, I started um, I started not publishing bounce rates in my reports to my uh, to my clients um, 
and also perhaps tellingly in uh, Google Analytics 4, um, it's not measured. Um, so uh, I would not worry I, unless there's something that you've got a really a really positive uh, sorry a, a very definite um, uh, reason for worrying about it um, just because someone says um, that bounce rate is a um, is an unproven um, ranking factor don't worry about it yeah mm. so, so assuming that you know, uh, interpreting this question as avoiding people leaving the site um, before you know you had a chance to present the content, for instance, um, that kind of bounce rate. Um, then um, you know I'd agree with um, Amit Bar said site speed. I would look at Core Web Vitals. I think they are useful figures. Um, it's not for bounce rate as such but the good indication of where your site is in terms of how fast it loads and how not jumpy it is. I think CLS or CLS is quite important. And those are nice figures. They are field uh, figures. They are actual user figures. They're very useful in that sense. And if you can improve those, that's something I would do. I wouldn't do that because it would reduce bounce rate but it will reduce the kind of bounce rate that you don't want, namely people leaving your site even before it loads. Yep. All right, let's go to number 11. Stephanie Jolly. Um, ask the question titled is it a good idea to write articles in two different languages on your website no it isn't um, can someone help me with some advice um, I initially started to write my website in English but then I realized I had less competition in my language Romanian I have a translating plugin but I want to use Romanian keywords that I know uh, may place my website further on top of searches. I'm so used to writing in English, it, it may be challenging in terms of how Yoast uh, SEO will be like. Uh, is there any setting where you uh, uh, change the language? Um, keywords in Romanian are fairly simple and I have a feeling it will help me more in terms of competition ranking, etc. Thanks. I'm struggling a bit about how this is set up. I mean, if the question is um, if they're going to have English version of the site and Romanian version of the site translated properly by human beings, then I do, and you know, then you have two separate pages. Then that's fine. I mean, then you'd have an English section and a Romanian section. That's totally fine. I have no issues with that. But this um, translator plugin inserting Romanian keywords into the, I suppose, the English page, and assuming that that they're trying to get Romanian speakers to land on the English page and use the translate a plugin then that's a no-no i'm not 100 sure what the exact setup is but if that's what they're trying to do then uh, that ain't going to work no um yeah i'm not sure what's going on here either um but if you're just trying to write some romanian content um because you think it's going to be easier to, to rank. Your first question is, um, why are you writing Romanian content? Is this because you have um, buyers in Romania? Um, if you have, then um, are you writing in English because you have English buyers as well? Or is that because you're happier to write in English? Um, 
you know you should be writing this content to um to communicate with your uh, uh with, with your customers if they're in romania then write some romanian content and if you're if they're in uh if, if they're in the english-speaking world um then write english but don't choose your uh your language at random because you can you think you can rank uh easy uh, rank easier for for it um even i can't speak english um so i'm not yeah i'm not entirely sure what's going on here so uh yeah that's just I, anyway. I um i don't know what the plugin is um but um But a new site that I'm, I'm a new company that I'm working with do actually have customers in several different languages. Um, and uh, I'll have to check what the plugin is. If I find it, I'll put it in. But essentially, it will auto translate. And we already know that that's not a great idea because auto translation, although it's much better than it used to be, is still sometimes grammatically incorrect. Uh, but this plugin actually will auto translate it um, and it doesn't go live until that page doesn't go live in that language until it has been human edited. Um, so you get your language person uh, to go into that one um, and it can even be assigned to different people. So in French and it breaks down the whole site just in those languages and you go in and the french person will go in uh refine it fine tune it because it will make sense but it just needs tidying up uh and then they hit pub you know they hit update and then and actually that one that page will go live and then they go to the next page and um so far that's been they've been doing that it's still this whole site still in development but um but it's working well there's so the team of who used to translate now just are essentially just refining. Um, so yeah, it seems to be working well. Um, they all seem to think that the particular plugin has translated it very well. Uh, minor, a few grammatical errors. Um, so yeah, uh, we'll revisit this at some point and see how it goes. Yeah, thank you, Tim. Uh, anybody else? Okay, let's move to number number twelve. Sharia Shah um, asks the question. It's titled, "Should I get bald too to become an SEO expert?" Notice I'm not bald. Well, there's only there's only one expert here, then I guess. <laughs> um, he said, lately he said I cannot get out of my head for a few months. That that um, why all of my search engine optimization friends and fans are bald. And when I went to an SEO job interview the other day, the guy interviewed, who interviewed me um, was bald too, which I wasn't expecting. Um, should I get bald too to become an ex -S SEO expert? Uh, or it's just me, whoever I see, um, have things in common? No, like any industry, you always get people with uh, dodgy genes, mate. And you just seem to be hanging around people with dodgy genes. However, the grey hairs, that's another thing. <laughs> I think grey hairs is a common is a common thing, but that just comes with age. Do you dye your hair, Tim? Hey? Do you dye your hair? No, of course not. This is naturally blonde with smatterings of grey. <laughs> I'm going to be silver soon, man. Uh, well, is it? I got silver here. Um, the worst part about the grey bit is the freaking wiry bastard things that come out of your eyebrows. 
They're like, barbarous for me. Yeah, but in between. <laughs> I've been in, in, in the breaks here. I've, I've been reading about this antivirus uh, contact support.com. Um, it, it, it could also be a, a negative SEO. It's just got so much uh, crap um with, with with the name um listed um it's just uh insane um what do you it, mean what what do i mean yeah well um say um there's a, a github um, listing on called fraud.txt um and um all, all of the names that, that are listed are literally uh, um, hundreds of thousands of, of domain names. Um, there's, um, oh, anyway, I'm, I'm, I'm delirious. Okay, let me, um, I know when I click this button, um, this, is got, yes, it is. It's, thank you for watching time. Um, well, it's really, really good having Andy back. You know, it's rattled me a bit. I don't, I don't know what I'm doing. Um, uh, we'll be back That's next beautiful. week. Yeah, same time, same place uh, to do uh, this uh, all again. Um, Hopefully we'll have Andy back again, and um, yeah, we'll, we'll see uh, what, what what can happen, what we can get happening. All right, um, so I just have to figure out how to turn this off. There we are.